Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. We, the daughters and sons of Him, who built the valleys and plains. Praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, you alone gives light to our grace. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the secret mysteries. With humble heart, together we say, I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in and my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what the conscience dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the needs of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jonah. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah made ready to flee to Tarshish away from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found the ship going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went aboard to journey with them to Tarshish, away from the Lord. The Lord, however, hurled a violent wind upon the sea, and in the furious tempest that arose, the ship was on the point of breaking up. Then the mariners became frightened, and each one cried to his God. To lighten the ship for themselves, they threw its cargo into the sea. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship, and lay there fast asleep. 
the captain came to him and said, What are you doing asleep? Rise up, call upon your God. Perhaps God will be mindful of us so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots to find out on whose account we have met with this misfortune. So they cast lots and thus singled out Jonah. Tell us, they said, what is your business? Where do you came from? What is your country? And to what people do you belong? Jonah answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men were seized with great fear and said to him, how could you do such a thing? They knew that he was fleeing from the Lord because he had told them. They asked, What shall we do with you that the sea may quiet down for us? For them the sea was growing more and more turbulent. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, that it may quiet down for you, since I know it is because of me that this violent storm has come upon you. Still the man rode hard to regain the land, but they could not, for the sea grew ever more turbulent. Then they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for taking this man's life. Do not charge us, do not charge us with shedding innocent blood. For you, Lord, have done as you so fit. Then they took Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea raging abated. Struck with great fear of the Lord, the man offered sacrifice and made vows to him. But the Lord sent a large fish that swallowed Jonah, and Jonah remained in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Then the Lord commanded the fish to spew Jonah upon the shore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the midst of the nether world, I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You will rescue me, my life, from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your billows passed over me. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am banished from your sight, yet would I again look upon your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. When my soul fainted within me, 
I remembered the Lord. My prayer reached you in your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said and reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, Jesus said, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and give them to the innkeeper with an instruction. Take care of him. If you spend more than I, what I, I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to robber's victim? He said, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. As we observe and and I believe it is necessary or required in one institution or to have its own mission and vision. In the school, in the company, and even the church. Because it is the direction or guidance or path to reach their goal. My dear brothers and sisters, we have now the 27th week in ordinary time. In our celebration today, we are reminded that we are guided by what God has wants us soon or to the near future. And what is this? It is to inherit the kingdom of God, to have eternal life. Very clear to us, to us all, my dear brothers and sisters, that our earthly life will be meaningful, well-spent, and worthy if we receive the great reward for us, which is to have eternal life. 
the ideal life, my dear brothers and sisters, should be lived in reality so that, that the promise to us by God will come true. As we heard in our gospel today, the scholar of the law stood up before Jesus and asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus was thinking about what is basic or fundamental in living completely in the standard of God. That is why he told him what is written in the law. Obviously, the answer of the scholar was based on the commandments. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Well said. And he challenges him to live out, and you will receive eternal life. The scholar was not contented. That's why he asked again another question. And who is my neighbor? Very direct and profound question. Apparently, my dear brothers and sisters, it is very difficult to answer right away. But Jesus surely knows the answer to this kind of realistic question. And Jesus now gave a parable that everybody could understand and that parable of the good Samaritan. It is undoubtedly of one of most popular parables of Jesus. But for the Jews, this is a contradiction because there is no such thing as a good Samaritan. Samaritans are their enemies for they are unclean and unfaithful people. My dear brothers and sisters, we have now a good Samaritan to guide us to answer who is our neighbors. There is a powerful word that captured the whole attitude of the Samaritan, which is the superiority of love over legalism. In fact, the love transcends all barriers of cultures, race, and religious or social status. Love is the supreme law. It is inclusive and universal. Love is the bloodstream of our relationship that we could apply to our brothers and sisters, not only for our family members. Mother, brothers and sisters, don't create and knowing the neighbors who are well off. A neighbor is someone who shows compassion to one another. Our neighbor are those who, earn, who need us anywhere and anytime. And challenges, it is to respond immediately with full generosity and mercy. And not to be hindered by any form of constructed social barrier. The world is full of suffering, pain, and loneliness simply because we do not treat each other as neighbors. Many of us, mother, brothers, and sisters, are so content and comfortable in our little world that we do not care to know who are our neighbors and what they, they need in their daily lives. Our attitude must be, my dear brothers and sisters, proactive because there is an urgency in this aspect of our Christian life. Anyone and everyone without exemption should be our mindset of dealing with our neighbors because nowadays, my dear brothers and sisters, in individualism in mind 
arises within our society. And we are busy and more interested in building walls, not bridges, which connect us with our neighbor. And this is a call for all of us today. Let us move breaking the barriers. Let us move into inclusive, not an inclusive neighborhood. As Jesus, in the last part of our gospel today, says to us, go and do likewise. Love, put it into action. Amen. Please stand. Even today, many lie on the side road waiting for liberating words or a helping hand. Let us pray to the Father in heaven that our love may be expressed in concrete action rather than in a beautiful words. And a repetition we say, Lord, let us be courageous and love. Lord, let us be courageous in love. That the church in her pastors and people may show the love of God through active love of neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let us, us be, be courageous, courageous in love. love. That those who work for the destitute will never lose heart or be discouraged. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, let us be courageous in love. That we may treat every person we meet with kindness and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, let us be courageous in love. That the lonely and the infirm in our society may not be ignored or passed by. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let us, us be, be courageous, courageous in, in love. love. That Christ may bring those who have died in his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let us, us be, be courageous, courageous in, love. in love. In the silence of our hearts, let us now pray for our personal intentions. God, our Father, as we pray for another's, we ask you to help us to love and serve our neighbors, and so welcome your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, goodness you have received, the bread you offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of the human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for the goodness you have received, the wine you offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of the human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to, re to redeem us 
to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself be a gift, since our praises add nothing to a greatness, but profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Awesome. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, o Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy their farthest gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will fought out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have been worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be God unto one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints you have preached throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life and to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but say, only the say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which you have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>